Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to my first intro video of Has Missions. My name is Chris Hazlitt and Has Missions partially comes from a nickname I picked up in the military with my last name being Hazlitt. Uh, people just shortened it down to Has. And Missions is in reference to going out to the mission field for the church. And it's like saying that I have missions or have mission trips. And so that's where the name Has Missions comes from. So this channel is primarily going to focus on where I'm going, where I've been, uh, what to do when you're looking at going on mission trips, uh, what to pack, and just various items like that. It'll be mostly following me in my trips. Um, every so often you'll get a video on like what to pack. That may not necessarily be purely on going on a mission trip, but may just have a couple of things that uh, touch on going on a mission trip. So if you're just a traveler, uh, there's a level this could apply to you. Um, but this is mainly going to have a emphasis on going out to the mission field uh, for God. So what I would like to focus on uh, for the for the most part of this video, seeing as how it is the intro video, is I do want to share my testimony. That way you can know who I am and uh, what my life is about and kind of what led me up to, you know, going out into the mission field, whether it be short term or long term. Right now it's mostly uh, short term. So I was born 1984. I'll let you guys do the math on that one for a couple of reasons. One, because it's just fun to make you do the math and two uh if you're watching this three four or five years from now it's, of course i'm going to be three four five years older so i'll let you do the math on how old i am and i was born in southern california uh united states of america of course uh for those of you outside of the u.s and i grew up without a father well I knew my dad. My mom and dad were never married, and I did meet him, did get to see him on occasion. Uh, he lived about 45 minutes to an hour north of where I was born and raised. And so, I, yeah, that's something that I'm still in prayer about. So I pray for my dad. Uh, he, I still keep in communication with him. And uh, it's it sounds like his wife, my stepmom, is also praying for him. She's a Christian. So I'll just keep praying for my dad there. Uh, and then just to go back, uh, when I was five, a couple months before I turned six, my grandmother passed away uh, on my mom's side. And this shook the family just enough to where myself, my mom... My grandfather and my uncle uh, got to church. My aunt went a couple of times, but um, the people let her down, and she hasn't really been to church since. Uh, my uncle's fallen off, fell off pretty quick. Um, I know he still has a uh, battle on believing and not believing, so I'll pray for him too. And my grandfather uh, passed away several years ago. So, as far as still going to church, it's pretty much always been my mom and myself. I grew up in a small Baptist church. I absolutely hated it. I did not like going to church as a kid. But the Lord was working because about 1992, I started going to church in about 1990. Uh, 1992, the Lord brought a guy named Jim Reed to the church I, I went to. I didn't really get to meet him or know him until I got into middle school in the, the later part of the 90s. And he was the like the youth leader there. Well, that was his primary focus, but he did a lot at the church. He helped with the finances. He helped with uh, maintenance. He did a lot. But uh, when I finally had a chance to uh, get into middle school, I had, on occasion would be in his... Uh, youth group, but was definitely in his youth group by high school. 
At the same time, he also helped out with the Christian club on campus at the high school I went to. And freshman year, he had semi bugged me about going. I mean, he didn't he didn't pester me so much that it was annoying. But he would just ever stop and be like, "Hey, you want to come check it out?" And a couple of times, I kind of just popped my head and say, "Hey, you know," but left. Um, sophomore year, I finally started attending. And so the Lord had definitely, at this point, was definitely working to me. And the neighborhood I grew up wasn't so great. It wasn't, for those of you that know, Los An the Los Angeles area, it wasn't Compton. It wasn't, uh, East LA. It wasn't anything like that. But if you're from the area I, I grew up in, you know that my neighborhood was not the greatest. And on top of that, I started getting into hip hop. I started getting into rap. And a lot of the secular hip hop and rap wasn't glorifying God like it should be. But fortunately, Jim actually would hang out with me after school. Uh, he'd take me to play like baseball or basketball. And um, he took me to a small Christian concert with Calvary Chapel Oceanside, which is where I'm attending now, um, but not, not at the time. But he was very familiar with Calvary. Uh, and so, for those of you who know about Calvary Chapel, they're all over the place, they're all over the world. Um, and so he, anyways, he took me to this Christian rap concert as a local guy. Uh, his name was John Word. And Jim got me the first one or two Christian rappers or, you know, Christian CDs uh, at this concert and gave them to me. And over that time, uh, we had another guy that would kind of minister to me. His name was Kenny. And they would pray for me. Well, with the, uh, what, how Jim taught what he was teaching, him hanging out, being kind of like a spiritual father figure, was definitely taking an impact. And one day when I was uh, 16, it was a week and a half before Christmas. I was in my house by myself, nobody else around. I was in my living room on the couch. I pretty much remember, I don't remember my exact words, but I do remember praying to God and praying to Jesus. And I said, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Uh, I want to accept you in my life. I don't know what to expect, but I want to follow you. And I haven't looked back since. Uh, I haven't regretted it since. And, I, and I'm and i never going to regret it, ever. And I told Jim he was, he was thrilled because he knew it wasn't forced. He knew it wasn't pressure. Um, and part of the reason is, too, is because when I was seven, I was sort of forced baptized. Um... Not like they drug, drugged me into the, the baptism pool or anything, but one of the elders or deacons or whatever was over at my house uh, with my mom and my grandfather, myself. We were talking, and then all of a sudden he was like, all right, let's get you baptized and let's pray. Bowed his head, prayed, and now I'm like, "What? what's going on? And my mom and I just kind of looked at each other, and my grandfather just was like, I don't know. Um, but the next thing I know, it was like a week or two later, I was getting baptized and I had no idea what that meant at the time. So when I accepted the Lord on my own terms at, at the age of 16, that had a lot more meaning. And it was the first couple of weeks of the new year when I got baptized on my own accord. And it was great. Uh, I remember we were actually, I was actually in the small little choir that we had. I was up on stage dancing, um, which was pretty funny because it was a Baptist church. <laughs> but uh, anyways, yeah, so that was one of the things I did. I was in the choir. If you know me now, I'm not really a singer. But at the time, I, I did. Um, and in the process, I started picking up a lot of Christian hip-hop and rap CDs. When I About the time I turned 18, I threw away all my secular CDs. Well, I can't say all. 99% of them. I kept a couple like Will Smith or something for a while. But uh, I threw, I pretty much threw away my the majority of my secular CDs. So um, about the time I graduated high school, 
I moved on to another church. Uh, there wasn't really many kids that were at the church I was at, at the Baptist church I was at. And Jim had the calling to move on. He went to a couple other churches after that. Then I worked with the high school kids at this at this other church. And then I eventually went back to the Baptist church I was at. Um, I also did a year of college and couldn't really find a job with the neighborhood I lived in. The couple of interviews I did have required that I would have to walk uh, from my house to the job at nighttime. And I didn't want to do that in my neighborhood. So about a year or so after that, after high school, I joined the military, I joined the army. The recruiters kept coming after me. And so eventually I joined the army. That was in 2003. Uh, I had a year of college under my belt at that point, so that kind of helped with getting an extra rank. Uh, I joined the reserves, so once I got done with basic training in 2003, I came back home. And then 2004, I got activated to Missouri for a year. Uh, I came home from that. 2009, I got deployed to Iraq for a year, came home in 2010. I was a chaplain assistant in the Army, which was a pretty cool job. It's the simplest way I could explain it is it was a mixture between a bodyguard and a, and a secretary. So it was pretty cool because they get me out in the field, but then get me back in the office. And so it was just a really cool balance. When I was going to school for that in 2003, I remember like that first week or so, they said, hey, you have to be able to uh, serve a chaplain of any faith, Protestant, Catholic, um, Muslim, Jew, and initially that didn't quite sit with me right, but I didn't want to rush into decisions, so it was like later that day or the next day, once we got done for the day, we were able to call home. We could call home like twice a week, and so I called home. I talked to Jim. I called Jim up and was like, hey, here's what's going on. I have to be able to serve a chaplain of any faith. What's your wisdom? And that's the thing I loved about Jim was that he, him and I stayed in contact. We were really close friends. So he said, hey, do it. This will give you a chance to learn other faiths, other religions. It will give you a better understanding. That way you can actually sit down and talk to him uh, on like a more of an intellectual level instead of just being like, you're wrong. And then, and then, like, you know, leaving. And so I was like, okay, I'll go through with it. And because he knew me, he, he knew I could go through with that and uh, not backslide or uh, stumble over other beliefs. And Jim and I just kept in contact. We, 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 were, we were like, you know, inseparable almost. Um, after 2010, I got out of the military in 2014. I went on my first mission trip to Australia in 2017. That was pretty cool because God used Iraq in 2009-2010 to get me to Australia. So when I was coming home for leave in 2009, it was about October of 2009, um, the, the briefings we were getting was like, hey, okay, if you're flying this part of the States, you're going to th fly through... I think it was Dallas. If you're flying to the other side, you're flying through Atlanta or something. And then they said, oh, hey, by the way, the one guy that's going to Australia, you're going like straight there or something. I was like, dude, you could do that. You could, you could go to Australia. You don't have to go home. And so I was like, okay, well, next deployment, you know, if there is ever a next deployment, I'll take my leave to, you know, go to Australia because it was, the flight was on the government's dime, on the government's paycheck. So... Next deployment never came, but it was still kind of in the back of my mind about doing that. And then in, oof, 2012, 2013, I think, I had a chance to go to the Philippines and for the, for the Army. And I, I think because it wasn't classified as like a deployment, we needed to get passports. 
So I went and got my passport. And after I got it, they were like, oh, hey, sorry, the spot's been filled. I'm like, oh, that's a bummer. I was like, well, at least I got my passport just in case. Well, just in case was in 2016 when I uh, was actually I was volunteering with the media ministry at church. Now it's the tech ministry. I was in the back room. There was like a almost like a one way mirror so we could see out into the sanctuary. And this was before service started, and there was a screen that kind of had, like, looping, like, announcements. And so I was looking at the screen. Oh, I was looking down, actually, and then I looked up at the screen, and I saw the thing for Australia. This was before they even verbally announced it. I saw the thing for Australia, and I was like, oh, I could go to Australia? And I reminded, I remembered when I had the chance, or, you know, could have had the chance to go, you know, for leave from Iraq. And I was like, you know what? Why go for myself when I can go for God? So I contacted the leader of the leader of the trip, and he was like, "Yeah, we haven't announced it yet, but we're having an unofficial meeting this day. Come on!" So I said, "Okay." Went to the meeting. A year later, I was on a plane to Australia for my first mission trip to uh, YRAM. Uh, youth, that's youth with a mission. They're also worldwide, and this was with Calvary Chapel Oceanside. At this point, I forgot to mention that. I started going to Calvary in 2000, about 2011, 2012. I'll most likely share that story going from the Baptist church I grew up in to Calvary another time. So I went on my first mission trip there. And then that was 2017 when I went. In 2018, I did a overnighter. And a one-day trip to Mexico. So it was three days all, all together in Mexico. And then second half of 2018, I went back to Australia. So um, the, both Australia trips were two weeks each. And then um, life kind of happened. I was supposed to go to Fiji. That got canceled with everything that was going on uh, over the last couple of years. The thing with that is that um, when it got canceled, the leaders had had backed out. Um, I'm not sure what the story was. I just know they had to step down. And so we had all this, a uh, few of us had all of this money raised. And for those who had raised the money, who had had people donate, uh, we, we couldn't get the money back. So it was, it was in uh, the church. I don't know what you want to call it. Account, whatever. And so I was talking to the, the missions pastor and there was a Malawi trip that we were partnering with, with another organization. And then I told him I wanted to get to Mexico because I, when we found out the Fiji trip was canceled, I just missed the June trip to Mexico. And so he was like, you know what, let's make both happen. Uh, because there was a second trip in uh, December of this year of uh, 2021 as of me recording this it's actually uh, tomorrow's New Year's Eve and so I just got back from uh, Loreto which is down in Baja California if you're looking at a map follow the Baja Baja California part of uh, Mexico go to the southern tip and then go just north of that along the uh, Gulf of California you might also see it as the Sea of Cortez just go north just a tad bit, and it's on the, the Gulf side. It's L-O-R-E-T-O. And so that's currently where I'm at now. Um, I'm actually looking at going in February 2022. For at least six months, there might be a possibility that I'll be there for through Christmas of 2022. So praying that, that's, kind of, that's uh, where I'll be at. Uh, next year in 2022 um i'm gonna go ahead and cut this video here it's getting pretty long and uh thank you for watching and stay tuned for more videos